Welcome back. Another two, three minutes before we start, but I just wanted to uh, welcome you back. Uh, I'm, I'm displaying uh, this uh, uh, agenda items that I had posted on Moodle. And I'd actually uh, requested you to have conversations about this with uh, three groups of people. One is within your family, with your spouse and or parents. Um, second was with your immediate supervisor or your mentor. And third was also with maybe your best friend. Okay, I think these are important conversations that you need to have within your immediate circles. Um, and I'd like for you to you know, use uh, this interaction that we're having over the next now uh, five days uh, to open up something for yourself so that uh, some new magical things can happen. Okay, uh, I promise that I would open up um, some conversations in Moodle. So I will open it up as these three, A, B, and C. I'll open them up as separate um, conversations for you to respond. And uh, depending on how it's going, depending on your feedback and your encouragement and uh, you know, positive uh, response, then we can take it to the next level. Uh, if any one of these does not have enough of a positive response, uh, then we may not be able to do it. The important thing is, if it's important for you, then there'd be, you know, we'd want to invest uh, time and energy in it and resources sometimes. Uh, and if it's not so important for you, then we will choose whichever one uh, might be more important and uh, then, you know, spend more time and energy on that. So with that, I now hand over to Professor Munish. So welcome, Munish. Okay. So very good morning, everyone. Um, so I am uh, Dr. Munish Chandil. I am faculty in Center of Environmental Science and Engineering. Uh, I have been teaching this course for uh, more than four years now. And it's uh, evolving very nicely. We have done some experiments. We have a lot of thinking involved into that. And you know, I will share with you uh, that how I delivered this course or the part of course now. And we'll also like to talk to you that how you deliver this course so that you know, we can evolve in future uh, with the sense that uh, tells us that what's the right way, what's the right way of communicating. Because I remember uh, one of participants said on the first day that you know, this course should be taught in primary school level. Well, for example, now this uh, Nestle noodles thing has come up. So you can now imagine that if I tell to a primary school student that there's a lead, there's arsenic or something like that, so probably his understanding will be altogether different than an adult who understands, who has gone through a, all schools and probably then engineering and sciences, etc. So what I would like to do is go to a center and just start a small discussion, ask that uh, how do you teach part of that what I'm teaching. For example, uh, as you can see that I teach largely the waste management, which is mostly solid waste management. So any center should be fine. Good morning, Shivaji University, Kolhapur. So I asked yeah, that uh, how many uh, members or how many of you teach this course? Five. Oh, very good. OK. It's 100%. So what do you teach in waste management, in solid waste management? Any one of you? Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, so we teach about the solid waste management. Along with it, uh, we also go for hazardous waste management, which also includes for uh, biomedical waste. Ah, OK, very good. How many lectures are dedicated for solid waste management? Four to six, sir. OK, four to six. Very good. Okay. So uh, I, I, it's very good that everyone of, for example, I took a sense in two centers. In one, there were just two members who were teaching. In the, in the second year, everyone was teaching this course. Quite amazing. So you know, I will share my experience, how I teach this. And then certainly, we have to discuss it and then evolve further that how this course should be taught at this level so that it is more interactive, it is more useful for the students. So in addition to the municipal solid waste management, I will also teach biomedical waste management, electronic waste management in this uh, course as well as also I teach in my regular classes. I also will talk about global warming and climate change and also what the technological solutions for global warming that, you know, many people, when we start talking about global warming, then they say, oh, this is a big issue. 
then people say that I will uh, plant a tree and then global warming won't happen. You know, these kind of issues are there. So we will try to take a realistic overview of global warming and then what are the technologies uh, available in terms of finding solutions and what is there, what are the different challenges with associated with technologies. So solid waste, you know, as the name indicate, any waste which is solid in nature or maybe semi-solid in nature. And when we say waste, it simply means that the component or the substance which doesn't have any value for us. That means it's not true that that material is not a material now, it is material, but we as a person, as a family, we don't understand, we don't think that this is valuable for us. So we discard, we start thinking that this is not available or this is not required for us. For example, this solid waste we generate not only in our houses or in our municipalities, but we also generate a huge amount of waste, solid waste from agriculture. Those of you who may be knowing that may, maybe many of farmers simply burn it or do something else with that. And also these minings, all of these mines, big mines, they produce tons, tons, millions of tons of waste, which is actually mining waste and it's another problem, another big environmental issue. And then someone of you told that we also teach hazardous waste. Yes, industries are a good or I would say bad source of waste. We generate a tremendous amount of waste. It varies from one industry to another industry and the, con the quantity may be too high in some places. It may be too less but then it's very hazardous in nature, so that kind of waste is generated in the industries, okay? But what is most important for us inside our or near to our houses, etc., is the municipal solid waste. The one reason is that it is generated inside the municipality, inside the urban areas, so that is uh, uh, very close to us and in addition to the agricultural, industrial and mining waste that is generated in a particular area which largely should be away, except the agriculture one should be away from the municipalities, etc. So in my course, I generally focus, especially for East, uh, for environmental studies course, I largely focus on the municipal solid waste rather than the, on the industrial and mining and agriculture waste which has different repercussions, which are another different issues, but I don't largely deal with them in my course, okay? And you may be understanding that when we say about municipal solid waste, in addition, if you understand in our society, in our urban uh, setting, we also have so many of hospitals because hospitals always should be or should be close to the municipality or inside the municipality because, you know, every one of us gets sick one or another. So we generate a tremendous amount of biomedical waste. Of course, it's much lesser than our municipal waste. And nowadays, because of a lot more use of our electronic items like mobiles, computers, etc., we use, we generate a lot of waste, which is electronic waste also. So in this, uh, in this course, I will also talk about biomedical and electronic waste because which is in fact a special case of municipal solid waste and as all of you may be knowing that uh, as per rules this is handled separately now. So this is a interesting picture uh, taken in Mumbai. This is what our municipal solid waste is. You, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a thing that you can find whatever you want to find. It has paper, it has plastic, it has soil, dirt, concrete, what not. Okay, so this is what our municipal solid waste is. And you know, the many people ask that, and in fact, if you see the many, for many years, we, our thinking was like that, that what's the deal about, what's the big deal about solid waste management? It's, it's nothing. We know how to deal with that. And that, that certainly is not the case. And 
you know, think of this. This is what I tell to my student that if we have a hostel in which we have a, let's say, hostel night and we eat well, we celebrate, we dance, and then keep everything like that after the party and then go to our room, sleep there. And next day when we come from breakfast, we make a breakfast, but we do not clean it. And then if we do this practice for a few days, then you can think that what will happen to our hostels. In fact, our hostels for the students will be converted into hospitals. Okay, that's not an uh, unknown thing. It can spread several diseases. For example, you may be knowing about this black plague thing in the Europe in the 14th century, because in that time the solid waste management, even in those 12 countries which are developed today, was not so developed. So what happened is they were not paying a lot of attention, and you know they were putting their, their they're throwing their waste near to the houses, dumping it here and there. So what happened? They were breeding of rodents and in fact, it led to a black plague, and you know half of the 14th century Europe was killed due to black plague. It's kind of exaggeration just to say that this was the only reason for black plague spreading, but that was one of major reasons. So many of you may be aware, for example, in Bangalore, I think it was last year or last last year, there was an issue with that where to waste should we put the waste and you know, the typical open dump site, they denied that we will want to take the waste of Bangalore. So then the city turned into a disaster in a few days, and then even the court has to intervene to take the solution. So the point is that we certainly need a very good waste management. And if we don't do that, it will lead to the different kind of disease spreading. It will lead to the air and water pollution. And it's already known that this solid waste mismanagement of solid waste actually is a big source of water pollution. So the question comes is that, OK, so what's the big deal? What's the big deal about solid waste if we can, if we can have airspace shuttles, if we can have aeroplanes, if we can have all kind of sophisticated instruments, sophisticated machineries? So why it is so difficult to manage solid waste? So I think to make it more interactive, I should go again to a, some center. Yeah. Ask that why do you think solid waste management is difficult? KIT College. KIT College. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I have read your question. Uh, why solid waste management is difficult to uh, handle? That was the question, right, sir? Yes. Uh, one thing is, as you mentioned in your slides, it is mixed uh, with different types of uh, uh, organic and inorganic matters, Absolutely. and the separation of these things becomes difficult. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the degeneration of different materials and got different lives, especially the inorganic materials. That is one thing. And uh, second thing, uh, the formation of leachates and other things becomes uh, difficult because they go deep down into the groundwater also. Yeah, so very nicely, uh, nicely answered that, you know, if you see the individual components of solid waste, probably handling and dealing with it, that is not difficult. We know that what to do with our food waste. We know that if we have paper, what to do with that. We know what can we do with the plastic. Only the problem starts, the major problem starts when we mix them together. And then try to find a solution which no more remains simple. Okay, for example, if I have paper, what can I do? I can recycle it. I can reuse it. In fact, I can do so many things with, with paper. But when I mix it with plastic, then it plastic won't degrade. Paper will degrade slowly. And then I mix it with the food waste. Food waste degrades in one to two weeks. Paper probably degrades in two months, and of course, plastic won't degrade. And then I also mix glass bottles, dirt, dust, etc. So the, in my opinion, the, the problem actually is once we try to intermingle them together and then try to find a solution. Then it becomes a really heterogeneous material, and then we really do not know what kind of technology to use. For example, if I have 20, 30% organic waste, and then mix, mix it paper, plastic, dirt, stones, etc., 
then probably it will be very difficult for the biodegradation to happen. So that's why this solid waste management has been become difficult. One, because we mix so many techno, so many types of material we get. It's a commingle. If it's commingle, it creates the problem. We do not know what kind of technology can work perfectly for that. So the question is that how big is the problem? How much solid waste we generate? Anyone who can tell me how much of waste we generate every day, I would request you should calculate it and also should be able to tell, I mean, this is the way I teach it in the class that what is the composition. So I give you, let's say, two minutes. You have to answer these three questions. I will go to a couple of centers. How much MSW we generate every day? Please think that how much you generate rather than looking at the real numbers which are on the public domain and then calculate it. You know, calculate that how much paper I generate, how much plastic I generate, and if you can tell me some approximate composition, that would be a real good thing. That's what I ask my students. So I give you two minutes to solve it, and maybe I will go to a couple of centers to ask this question. Techno India, Salt Lake, Kolkata. Uh, so uh, that could be, say, it's a mixture of the waste. So if you are saying about the weight, it could be something like, say, uh, between 400 to uh, 600 uh, grams per day. OK. And what is in per that? family in the sense of family con consisting of, say, two, two to three people. Like, I'm talking about OK. And uh, it uh, basically would comprise of vegetable peels, uh, certain uh, polythene materials in which we buy fruits, vegetables, etc. Organic uh, things like uh, the entrails of, say, fish or, say, prawns cleared and uh, the peelings of uh, such sort of organic waste, which may or may not be on a daily basis. And then it could be peels of fruits like banana peels and organic and uh, like this, uh, which would generate from the kitchen. And the other is the sewage, which, I mean, obviously, that is in the in a different aspect. Okay, very good. So, but you said 400 to uh, 600 grams, is, is it per day basis or it's per family basis? Yes. Uh, per day, per family. Say so a family of uh, two to three people. Okay. So uh, maybe give it to Mike to someone else. I can take opinion of someone else. What do you think? So there is another question. That, uh, okay. Sir, I want to say that there, uh, if I want to state about the composition of solid waste, I want to state that there are generally two types of solid waste. One is rubbish and one is garbage. The garbage which is not biodegradable and rubbish which is non-biodegradable. Inside rubbish, we can say the organic waste we are generating. And in, uh, inside of uh, garbage, we are state we are uh, uh, what the organic waste we are generating. And in, in case of your uh, rubbish, we can say that there are combustible rubbish and non combustible rubbish. Uh, regarding rubbish, uh, combustible rubbish, they are food, paper. And in case of incompatible rubbish, they are like metals, glass. I want to state about just only the composition of the so municipal okay. solid waste. Sir, you have stated an example of black plague. Yeah. So can you please explain what, how it gets generated, this black plague? And it is, if it is still prevalent uh, in present scenario or not? Probably not. Yeah, that was 14th century thing and we are, have moved beyond of any kind of plague, etc. which no, not more happening, that plague, plague probably not happening. Yeah, uh, but can you just tell if you want and how it got generated? Yeah, I think okay. So that's a very good question, but probably out of uh, out of the scope of my thing. This I was just giving an example that how you know the rodents and fleas can be generated, and that can spread several diseases. But can you tell a little bit about composition, which is what I'm asking now? The composition. What my colleagues have said are perfectly all right. The thing is that it can vary from 400 grams to 500 grams per family per day. Okay, very good. Okay. All right then. Thank you. 
So, uh, the Kolkata people said that there is a uh, 400 to 600 or 500 grams of waste generated per per family, but I mean certainly they are true when we are generating waste from our houses probably that is uh, is little bit in that range, but you know the, the data uh, collected by different agencies, they say that the small towns for example, they generate approximately 100 grams of waste per person per day and it is necessary is not only the waste which is coming from our houses, but also from our street sweeping etc. And the another one slightly larger tons, they generate 300 to 400 grams per person per day, which is little bit higher. And then the larger towns like Mumbai or Delhi, etc., they generate even more, 400 gra 500 grams or even more than that. So the question is, and it's very interesting, and the interesting is that why the small towns generate less waste, and why medium more, and then the large towns even higher than that. So anyone, anyone can think of this, that why the larger is the town, the per capita. Remember, I am talking about per capita basis, why we are generating more waste. So, let us go to Goa College of Engineering. The reason is because of the economic status. Okay. As the, as the human being are more comfortable with uh, their economic status, they are tend to use more and more and therefore, this uh, small town to medium and medium to higher uh, uh, bigger town, you find the standard of living is very high and therefore they generate more solid compared right. to a small town where yeah. the living is very simple. Yeah, and very good, very good. That's certainly related to the economics and it's also related to the lifestyle also. For example, if if you are in a small town, the tendency or the style of living is totally different. We do not believe much on fast food. We do not eat lot of visa, lot of you know boxes etc, but that changes to a larger city, although it is changing very rapidly in this. Very good answer, thank you. Okay, so the, the, the generation increases, it increases with increase in our economic status, that means richer the people are, they generate more. It is also related to our lifestyle, for example, if you are in larger towns in the busy cities like Mumbai, where you do not have much time even for cooking etc, you are bringing a lot of pizza and all that kind of food probably and bringing along with that lot of waste. Okay, So, that is also there are two major reasons for that, very good answer by people from Goa. And you know just to tell uh, to my students, I also tell them that how much it is generated across the country and it is mathematically it can be just said that if I assume that approximately 500 grams per person per day or even I assume uh, it is 400 grams, I can calculate how much of waste probably could be generated in all major cities. This is a uh, report on of the task force on waste energy and they estimated that approximately 62 million tons of MSW is generated annually by 377 million people in urban areas and uh, as many of you know most of it is disposed in open dumps it's in uncontrolled fashion okay so that's uh, that's the status that means we are it's it's probably under estimation but probably we are talking about approximately 100 million of tons msw coming every year across the major cities in india This is uh, based on uh, some data based on uh, some another report. It basically says that the 18.4 percent of our MSW is generated in six major or mega cities and 17 percent more is generated in 1 million plus tons. That means the population is more than 10 lakhs and 37 percent is generated in the cities or towns which has 1 lakh plus population. So, if you see in that way, if I total it up, 70, approximately 72.5 percent of the waste is generated in 1 million, sorry, 1 lakh plus tons. That means 6 mega cities, 6 
or uh, more than 50 metro cities and then approximately 450 or so of the cities. So that means the problem is concentrated. That means we are we just have to deal with a few major cities, 500 odd city. Of course, 500 is not less number, and we can have a good solution out of it. How much it cost? I can tell you that it's uh, it's it's an expensive stuff. So far, this is a little bit old data given in 2009. The ULBs, the urban local bodies or municipality, they spend 500 to 1500 per ton. That means it's approximately 50 pesos to 1 rupees 50 pesa, and now it's certainly more than 2 rupees per kilogram basis. And interestingly, the most of it, this money is spent on collection. That means it's collected from different houses. That's the most of the money is going, 60 to 70 percent. And the remaining 20 to 30 percent is spent on transportation, transportation to the dump sites or the disposal sites. In most of the municipalities, I shouldn't say every municipality because it's changing very rapidly, there is no money or negligible money spent in treatment and disposal. And I can tell you that's altogether different from the developed countries. There is a lot of money, a good amount of money spent actually in the treatment and disposal. So if we start talking about treatment and disposal, that means there will be certainly a lot, a lot of money need to be invested, need to be paid for the solid waste management. And even if you see the major metro cities, their collection efficiency is as high as 90%. But in smaller cities, even the collection is not that efficient. And you will find that in many places, the waste lying here and there. Less than 50%. That's probably very low. Okay, so the whole question of solid waste management is also related to the economics. Okay, basically, if you see 1.5 rupees per kg or something, which is just spent now, it will go up, and that means someone has to pay for this money. Okay, so let me ask you a few questions, which probably are relevant for all of us as in society, and that's what I ask in the, my class also. The question is. In your opinion, what will be the cost of each kg of MSW managed scientifically in India? That means when we talk about the MSW management, not the way we are doing it, putting in dumps, but in scientific manner, in a nice manner, so that it has at least environmental degradation. And are you ready to pay directly for the MSW management? For example, we pay for electricity. We got a bill in most of places for water. Are we ready to pay even for MSW management if we get a bill saying that, OK, this is your bill for MSW? And if so, how much of how much you are willing to pay for your MSW management? If I ask you that monthly, how much you will pay? pay? Let's say we assume a family of four. If it's more than it's, it's a larger family, then probably divide, calculate for four. And what do you think? For example, if we compare with the 12 countries, let's say Germany, USA, or UK and Japan, how much they may be paying? What is your opinion on this? So I please write down everyone in on your the piece of paper and maybe give it to the coordinator so that we can collect it uh, from them. And I will ask some of them this question and maybe we will, you know, this is the way I do it in the class, maybe discussed with some of them that why you are ready to pay and why you're not ready to pay. So just one minute for answering this question, and then I will come to a few centers. Good morning, VIT. Good morning. Yeah, so can you please answer those four questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, somewhere around two rupees, maybe uh, 50 rupees per month. Per month, for a family of four? Yes, around. Very good. OK, how much do you approximately pay for your family's phone bill? 1,000 rupees. 1000 rupees but why yes you know just 50 rupees for msw see i'm i'm, I'm calculating not on the basis of just collection yeah. but if you treat it properly yeah. and the returns that you get of course i'm i'm going to segregate and give it uh, give the waste okay so if i'm segregating the uh, dry and uh, wet waste yeah obviously it can be utilized in a proper way very good okay 
how much probably people in Germany or in US are paying for solid waste management? Any guess? No. No guess. Okay. So let me tell you tell you upfront that the 50 rupees what you're saying is won't solve or cannot we cannot manage the MSW in a scientific manner. Okay. This is a kind of mindset we have to bring in. For example, if you just see the figure I show you, only for transportation, only for transportation, I think it's approximately 2 rupees per kg. That probably will mean for a family of 4, uh, 60, 120 rupees only for transportation. Okay? So, you know, the important part which everyone of us across the country has to understand is that all these services won't come free. And we will talk a little bit later that many of us believe that, you know, we can generate energy, we can generate biogas, we can produce compost, certainly we can do everything, but it cannot offset the total cost of the solid waste management. So I think across the country we have to think and scientifically calculate and evaluate that how much need to be paid. And the question to maybe, uh, maybe to another center, please. Uh, hello. Hello, Mumbai. Hello. Yes. Can you please answer the four questions? Yeah, sir. That is uh, more than 100 rupees, we feel. Okay. So the first question is, how many of you are ready to pay for MSW management? Everyone. Everyone. Raise your hands. Everyone, sir. Okay. And how much? 100 to 500 rupees per month. 100 to 500. So you're ready to pay 500 rupees per month? Yes. Very good. And what do you think? How much it will cost to manage a waste of even for one kilogram? How much is money required? 1.5 rupees per kg. Yeah, but that's only for transportation. If we have to treat it, we have to do the processing that probably it costs a lot. Okay, maybe 10 times of or even five times of that. So you see the, the Indian, we have to change the Indian psyche also and we should stop thinking that this water, this solid waste management can be come free. Okay, of course, no, nothing like water treatment, we cost a lot and in front of the solid waste management, we have to spend a lot of money. So far, we are just talking about the the transportation only, and if I, so by the way, do you know that how much a country like, a country in Europe, for example, Germany may be paying for solid waste management? Um, more than 100. More than 100 rupees per day, per month, per person, what is 100? Per person. Per day? Uh, we think so, we think so. Okay. So, so this is an assignment uh, so for you guys, you know, just to know that the four countries which I have mentioned in my slides, how much they pay even in terms of per kilogram or per ton of waste they treat. Okay, so please do this assignment and submit it to their coordinator so that we can get it. You know, we just want to get a sense across the country that how much, of, how much money people are ready to pay. So let's go to somewhere in South. Thank you very much. So let's go to South somewhere. Hello, Rangaswami, Rangaswami College. So can you answer those four questions, please? So sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. So please answer the first question. Sir, for the first question, I don't like to pay any rupees. You don't want to pay? Yes, sir. Why? Sir, oh. Uh, per day in my house, I may generate uh, 1 to 2 kg of uh, waste. It uh, contains 90% uh, degradable waste and 10% it may be non-degradable waste. I have to use uh, decompose to for that for my kitchen garden. Then why should I pay to the government? Yeah, but so the, are you saying that you will deal with all of your waste your, yourself? You don't want to give it to municipality? No, sir. Okay. So sir, I, I have to uh, utilize my 
waste which is generated in my home. Okay, so what are you doing with your waste right now? Sir, I have to practice the utilization no, no, of biodegradation. What are you doing now? That is in my practice, sir. This is I am practicing in my life. Oh, okay. You are degrading I it. Suppose. Very good. You see, Thank that's you. very interesting. If all of us can deal with our base, certainly we don't have to pay. But I yes, cannot, I, I cannot uh, deal with all of my waste. For example, I do not know what to do with my plastic. I do not have a space for Sarah. my composting facilities, so I have to give it to municipality again. I do not know what to do with the battery. I do not know what to do with my old mobile phone, etc., etc. Okay, so it may be because you have uh, enough space in your house, but so can you give it to someone else who doesn't do it what you're doing, but has to give it to municipality? Sir, I am willing to pay to municipality because uh, how much you ready to pay? Bags, yes, uh, sir, per month minimum two hundred rupees. Okay. You have to pay because that uh, segregation of waste and uh, that waste may be processing and uh, that cost may be again uh, we are going to elevate our municipality in a positive manner. Very because good. Because otherwise that waste are going to be dumping in the landfill unnecessarily. It will create some other problems to the environment. Okay. So we have to pay at least 200 rupees per month is reasonable. Sir. Okay. So if, if you get a bill from municipality saying this is your monthly bill for solid waste, you are ready to pay, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. How many of you are ready to pay? Good, Please raise your hands. Okay. Most of, most of you. Very good. And if I ask you, you have to pay approximately 10 rupees per kg, then how many of you will agree to that? 10 rupees per kg, which eventually is 600 rupees per month. Yes, 500? Sir, 200, our uh, group is uh, willing <laughs> to pay 200 is reasonable. Okay, 200 is reasonable. Okay, very good. You say these are very interesting questions and many of you will have different opinion and that's rightly so. And, you know, as I mentioned, the two rupees cost is only uh, for the transportation purpose. In fact, if you see the bigger cities like Mumbai, probably it's more than that. But if I tell you that the cost of whole MSW management will be 5 rupees to 10 rupees per kilogram, depending upon the technology, even, even higher than that, which eventually means for the family of four, if I put then we have approximately 30, 60 kilogram of waste generated in a month, which actually means that every one of us should be paying from 500 to 600 or 700 rupees. So it will be a difficult question to answer and you know many of us hasn't accounted it but as a matter of fact this need to be paid either directly or indirectly and this kind of awareness we have to generate in our people and to understand that how MSW is managed in developed countries we should look, look into that. So here is a assignment for every one of you. Please search in the Google when you have time and find that how much Germany, USA, UK and Japan are paying for per ton of their waste generated. And the question we have to answer is whether we are ready to pay that much or even half of that because I can see that you know you will, you will argue that the, the labor cost etc. is much cheaper in, in our country as compared to those countries but still the technology if you use the same technology that won't cost very less. So we should be ready to pay. And this need to be generated, this need to be understand by the whole society, probably the students, we have to tell the student in the first place. Okay. So this is the graph showing that how the total waste generated is increasing. If you see in 47 or so, it was just a few tons, a few million tons. And in coming years, it has increased rapidly. One reason is increase in population, the second is the increase in economy, our lifestyle has changed. Okay, so that means now we are dealing with approximately, the planning commission says something like 70, 80 million tons, but in future it will be 150 million tons very soon. 
and many of you can argue that it's again already it's in that range only. So if you just assume that the annual urban population is increasing by 3 to 5 percent, 3 to 3 point percent, 5 percent and that probably means approximately 5 percent annual increase in MSW generation accounting that per capita based generation is also increasing. Okay, so that means by 2047 we will need approximately 1400 square kilometers of land for just dumping it. I am using the word dumping or maybe even land filling. That is a huge, huge amount of land and that probably is not available in many of places. You may be knowing that many states, many municipalities are already are in trouble to find a, find a proper space because many of our landfills or open dumps are already overloaded. So forget about the technology, forget about everything, even just to put it somewhere we do not have land and it is a huge amount of land and then you, if you calculate the cost of this much of land in cities, that is too much. Okay, so that means there is still there is a big problem in now and it will be exaggerated in future. So these are the characteristics of our solid waste generated. You know this is a little bit older based on study done by Pollution Control Board and published by Charolier et al. In 2000, if you just spend let us say uh, one minute on understanding this and see that how much what, what is in our waste, I just request you to see what is how much is paper, textile, leather, plastic, glass and earth, ash fine earth materials and compostable matters and try to correlate maybe your city may be diff have a different composition but this is more or less is across the country. So if you see it is varying from, uh, from one city to another and uh, part of it is uh, there are always question asked about how this composition is calculated whether it was in rainy season or in non rainy season and how many samples taken etc etc there are many question asked but uh, if you see the two major component which is in our waste is ash fine earth and other inert materials dirt and dust huge actually as high as reported 52.5% in kanpur and the second big material is the compostable matter which many of us know that the biodegradable food waste etc which can be degraded that is huge okay so you know the, this composition thing is always confusing for example whether this composition is taken at the source level for example at our houses level or is it at the uh, treatment sites or the dumping sites but i think the most of it is uh, in my opinion is when when the waste is generating the dump sites or the treatment sites it may vary when we are generating it because a good amount of our paper and other materials like even plastic is recycled and be many of us has a good tendency of giving this to uh, for recycling for example newspaper etc we always collect that's very good practice okay but if I see, if I can find a technological solution, so there are two major things I have to look into, ash, fine earth and other materials and the another one is the compostable matter. So that means in many of our, my technological systems, I always have to think of treating this compostable matter and to deal with the ash and fine and earth materials, okay. And then of course these remaining materials are there but their concentration is less. It may vary, you may have, you may argue, agree or disagree with this composition, but this is what is given in waste management paper published. So that means a lot of waste, different composition, okay, the problem is increasing in future, we, we will be running out of land, etc. That means we need a proper solid waste management systems as you see in many nowadays that yeah, there is a lot of emphasis, our Honorable Prime Minister is putting a pressure and putting, uh, not sorry, I shouldn't say pressure, but putting a right direction and he has started the campaign of Swachh Bharat. So that means the solid waste management is an important issue for us and that means we need to deal with that. The solid waste management, how do we define it, is the management of waste from its generation when we realize that this is a waste to the final disposal that uses the best principles of public health economics, 
engineering and conservation okay so when i when i read this uh, this definition to my students i also ask them for example for forget about solid waste management but if there are other things which we do or which we follow in our country are we following the best principles of public health are we following the best principle of economics are we following the best principle of engineering and conservation or not so is it that the the way country evolves that means those system will eventually improve or we have to put additional effort on that okay so that's a kind of you know difficult question to answer that how we are in evolving in in terms of in solid waste management and if you compare it with the other infrastructure etc the things etc okay so that kind of question i generally ask my students okay so solid waste management you know i many of you know it because you're teaching it and also you will find that many of the students also know it so when i tell them i just quickly tell them there are different functional element started from generation and primary storage that means storage at our house level and then collecting waste then separation storage processing and transfer and transport then processing and recovery and the final disposal that's what are the different functional elements so this is the simplest one this is uh, as uh, as someone in chennai they mentioned that uh, you know uh, the she is uh, segregating the waste into dry and wet probably and using the composting for the 99 90% she said of her waste but nevertheless you know so this is the where minimum every one of us can do and that is even many of our municipalities are guiding put a dry and put at least two bins at our houses put dry waste in one for example paper plastic etc of course if you can recycle or segregate it further that's amazing but at least one bin and another bin for food waste etc okay the wet waste so that means then once we have at least this primary level of segregation and storage then this biodegradable waste can go to a biodegradation facility and the remaining can be treated and i should tell you upfront that if we can do this small thing across the country half of our problem will be solved i can guarantee you if we can segregate dry and wet half of our problem will be solved okay but unfortunately we are not even uh, we are all are wise but we are not even doing that small thing but if we start even with having is two bin instead of one at our houses the half of problem will go this is another picture it's taken in some airport they have now a food waste and recyclable waste okay, again for the primary storage and then as i mentioned if you see the if you remember then composition thing i showed the good amount of our solid waste has dirt and dust okay and a good amount of that is coming from sweeping cleaning of our streets etc because this is a, many of our india's part is arid in arid region in, are in arid region there is a lot of dust and dirt so we collect a good amount of our waste which is from our street sweepings many in many places we still are using manual sweepings there are several people uh, employed by municipalities they are cleaning our roads etc and of course in in some parts we are now having mechanical sweepers which basically collect waste using a trucks etc uh, but this is a good amount of waste we are generating actually and uh, if you find you can talk to municipality you will realize that a good number of people are employed just for manual sweeping of the road and that's a lot of money okay but the problem is that once we do manual sweeping etc we sweep our roads and then mix the waste which is coming from houses and then that complicate our problem so the segregation again is the key here and then the second part of that is once the waste is generated is the collection many of you uh, if you are living in large in larger cities now we have door to door collection systems that means someone comes either employee of uh, your municipality or a person hired by the society etc he collects waste from door to door that means he knocks on your door and takes a waste and then in some places which is 
largely di getting discouraged now is the community bins. That means no one will come to your house, but you take your waste out of your house and put it in a bin which is on the roadside. That's called community bins. Okay, so that's the collection part. These kind of bins, especially if you if you are uh, in larger cities, cities like Mumbai are now using these kind of bins. Many of them are kept outside your houses or outside your society. So you take your waste and put into this. Okay, and you know many of you, uh, you may have noticed that in many parts of our country, which is now getting discouraged, there were uh, larger bins. You know the GI. Uh, or cast iron bins which were kept on the road sides and everyone in the morning or whenever they put the waste into that and they were cleaned either daily or in two, three times in a week or so. But if you see that those kind of bins are now discouraged because you know our roads, especially our cities are becoming uh, crowded and a lot of uh, vehicular population there. So we don't find many of them, but this was the old practice, okay, so that means you uh, take your, uh, take in fact, even larger uh, community will take their, uh, take their waste to those bins and put there. But what has happened in many times, what will happen, especially the festival season, you know, they're overfilled, they are overflowing, and then they encourage stray animals, and sometime even the traffic jam has happened. So you will find that in many cities like Mumbai, those are actually more or less stopped now. Okay, but we just have these small bins, uh, which you can call the community bins. So once we store it, then the second is the collection, the collection from your, from your municipality, from your societies, from your houses, okay? And there are different ways of doing that in many places they're done, but if you, see that now we are starting using a kind of trucks which are called packers or compactor trucks. If you see, if you are in Mumbai or in some larger city, you will find a big truck which has a compaction system. So why it is so? So, you know, the, the many types of our waste which we generate is high in volume but very less in density. So what it basically means is that if we try to fill in a, fill in a truck, it will immediately fill the truck, but the, the volume, because of the volume, but the mass transported will be very less, okay? So what will happen if I do not compact it, if I just put on my waste like that, because of the high volume and less density, the truck will, all, will be immediately filled. So many of our uh, municipalities are using compacted trucks. So what they do is basically they use a system, uh, so on. Yeah, so this is what is a compacted truck. This is a, you know, the mechanical uh, or hydraulic compaction system here. So we collect waste, but if I do not do compaction, this whole truck, uh, it's a Mumbai waste truck, it will fill immediately. So what I do is I fill it and then keep on compacting it so that my density increases and I can carry more and more waste. Okay, so if you find that the many of our cities, the density of waste is when we are collecting the waste on the roadside, etc., or after the primary collection is 300 to 400 kilogram per meter cube. This density is 100 to 200 kilogram per meter cube in the 12 countries. So, you know, I always ask this question to my students that why it is so, that why the density of waste is more in India as compared to the 12 countries. So, because it is related to the what kind of waste we are generating and as I mentioned, we generally use, have a lot of uh, in our waste inert and uh, dirt and dust that has comparatively high density, but in 12 countries because of this less inert material, etc., the density is a little bit on lower side. So they have more compaction available, but even in our country, we can compact our waste as high as to 750 kilogram per meter cube. That means the compaction ratio is two to three times. That means if I do not use this compaction system, I probably have to take two or two, three extra round to my disposal site. So that this compactor truck, in fact, helps in many ways. So once we collect it, or in fact, even this collection itself is a part of transportation system. So one 
good component which need to be managed by municipality is the transportation of municipal solid waste. How many trucks? What should be the size of truck? And what is the best efficient route? Okay, and what is the schedule? Should I do in the morning? Should I do in the afternoon? Should I do in the evening? Or should I do in the late in the night? Because if you if you are in a city like Mumbai, you will understand that it is very important that if I bring a large big truck and that is moving across the street, which is not so broad probably, I lead to a jam. And because if I have to collect waste from house to house, it certainly will jam the whole road because it is stopping at each nook and corner. So it's very important to understand that what time and what should be the schedule and where should I go because you know, otherwise it will lead it to a big kind of problem. And it's also very interesting that we talk about segregation, we talk about recycling, and then we talk about different technologies. So what will happen in future? We, for example, now most of, in our most of municipality, we get just one truck, which takes waste from all, our from all the houses and take it to the disposal site. But if you want to have uh, source segregation, if you want to have uh, material which is recyclable, compostable, or even dry and wet waste. So that means we need either the trucks which are comparted. That means there are a few compartment into that, or we need separate trucks. And it may be that my biodegradable facility, my composting facility is at one place, but my open my my landfilling site site is a different place. So that means there may be different routes required. So in fact. If you see and if you calculate it, and if you calculate, for example, for Mumbai, where approximately 7,000 of tons of waste is generated every day, and then we talk about the collection, and then if it costs, let's say, three to four rupees per kg, then it's we are talking about a few crore rupees in a month. Okay, so that means this optimization that what should be the transportation route, how many trucks, size, etc., is very critical and very important too. Okay, it's an important term. Otherwise, it, it will be reflected in the high cost. So that means this is an example of a system, of a routing system, in which how to collect our waste. For example, this is showing that I start from the one point and keep on going from one, one collection point to second, third, and fourth, and then go to the next point, and then so on and so forth. So basically, the collection trucks they have to maneuver, they have to move through the cities, and you know there are many points through them they have to go. Okay? So, in fact, it's a critical path problem. In, if you remember your uh, PERT and CPM cl uh, classes, it's, it's need to be solved in that manner. And it may be simple for small towns, but it is certainly a complex problem for cities like Mumbai. It's a huge optimization problem. Okay? So the idea is that we have least dead ends, and the idea also is that we shouldn't end up having a circular system where we are not even collecting but moving around and around. Okay. Interestingly, many of our books, which are written by foreign authors and we use it, they say that we should take right turns. So reason is because in countries where they drive on the right side, right turn is free. That means you do not have to stop in the signal, but just you can take right turn. But okay, but that's not the case in India. In fact, right turn is the most difficult in India. So okay, so please see which book you are mentioning that, uh, and many of time we just follow the books and agree that okay, we should take right turn, but as a matter of fact, we should take left turn. So that kind of optimization need to be done. Okay, that's interesting, and I can tell you that this optimization can save a lot of money. Large versus small trucks. The option, there are a few uh, different sizes trucks. You know, if I have a large truck, that's a good idea because I do not have to take a number of, my number of trips will reduce, but it's complicated also. For example, if I have a city which is really crowded and there are small, small streets, and I take my large truck to collect my waste, and then it will be struck, okay? And the whole day probably you end up in just clearing that truck. But if you have small trucks, then of course they can maneuver easily but because of that uh, maneuvering uh, and because of the, it can only contain, uh, carry small amount of waste, you have to make more trips. Okay, so that kind of question need to be answered, question need to be optimized for each individual cities. 
So that means if I have to use smaller trucks, should, be, I, should I have a transfer station? So what is a transfer station? Where I collect waste from different, uh, uh, different areas and store it temporarily or even transfer there at from a smaller truck to, to larger trucks, okay? So think of this. Think of that I have a, a small number of uh, small size trucks and for a city like Mumbai, of course, many. And then I have to transfer my base, let's say, for 100 kilometers. Now, you, many of you are thinking I'm crazy, right? 100 kilometers is a very far distance. But you will see it soon, or you may be seeing in your cities that easily this waste, um, our waste, actually travels 40, 50 kilometers in many of our cities. And if you compare it with many of 12 countries, for example, New York City, they take it even, even further away. They have to take it further away because of no land available or because of different issues. So then the question is, should we have a transfer station? So that means, is it a good idea to take all my small trucks from collection point to straight to the disposal points? Or should I have a transfer station in between so that I collect waste, put it in transfer station, transfer it to a larger trucks or even to a train and then take it to disposal site. That question need to be answered in this optimization, okay? And this is a very small uh, exercise I generally give to my students that whether we should do direct hauling, that means no transfer station or should we have a transfer haul. But if you see this graph, basically if I am doing the direct haul, my cost is linear, but if I am doing a transfer haul, that means I am transferring, again, there will be some minimum cost on the transfer station, and there will be a point beyond which it will be a good idea to have a transfer station, okay? So that kind of optimization problems uh, need to be done. In, in fact, this is called break-even distance. It could be 20 kilometer, it could be 30 kilometer, it could be even more, depending upon the capital cost of the smaller and larger trucks and also cost about the transfer station, okay? Uh, let me take a few questions if someone wants to ask something. Congo. Okay, Congo Engineering College. This is pertaining to spent fuel from the nuclear reactors. How are we dispersing that? It is hazardous, it is still radioactive. What are the methods adopted by the Indian government and the nuclear scientists in the nuclear power stations to dispose of the nuclear waste? Very good question. You know, this is a very good question, but uh, uh, unfortunately, we do not cover uh, this very specific questions in our course. And what you can, what we can do is we can put in our discussion form and then maybe try to answer your question, but probably this is not what we cover in our environmental studies course. EV, E2 group, you know, erode. erode. Please ask your question. Uh, regarding solid waste management, only depends on the cost. Uh, for management of uh, solid waste management, how to create the uh, funds? And or we will create the funds from the waste, solid waste. What are the methods available for creation of funds from the waste? Very good question. Okay. So, you see, uh, many of us actually think that, for example, water, uh, sanitation, and even the solid waste management should be done by the government, right? So that's true, in a sense. But what is government, right? So ultimately, we pay taxes. And then that money will be used for servicing, providing different services for the people. So either pay, we pay directly in terms of the actual bill we get, or we pay in terms of taxes living in, in cities, etc. So in fact, it will be easy for all of the municipalities if every one of us agrees that, okay, 
please tell us that how our money is used and out of that how much you use for municipal solid waste management and even doesn't matter if if i get a bill telling that annually i am paying 500 or 5000 rupees i do not know how much but for solid waste management 500 rupees or 1000 rupees for water and remaining for the road infrastructure etc so already we are paying it directly or indirectly right so that means we have to pay it and if we have more awareness that means more people are ready to pay directly that will even help the purpose okay so that means we have to pay and that will be the fund generated there won't be any third party fund we shouldn't expect that sdm college please ask your question good afternoon sir yes please ask your question Sir, can you please explain the methods to convert polymer into fuel? Convert polymer. Ah, yeah, conversion of polymer into fuel. Yeah, this plastic is, into fuel. Yeah, this is a very good question. But in our class or in my lectures, I do not cover this very specific one. We certainly will talk about. How the food waste, how the different kinds of solid waste can be converted in broader, in broader perspective into the energy, which will come in maybe in the uh, Monday's class or so. But it's a very good question, and unfortunately, we, because of the time constraint, extra, we do not go into that kind of detail. Okay. Yes. Near my university. Hello. Good morning. Hello, sir. Dumping station in 100 kilometer is too far away from the city. There should be nearby area of the city where we can uh, create some recreation or picnic places for to useful to the humanity. Yes, that's a very good, uh, very good idea. But in, in unfortunately, what has happened in cities like Mumbai, you know, it's like you understand that NIMBY, not in my backyard. No one wants a solid waste site near to our houses. So it is almost difficult to get a new site in, in, or in and around the city, even in, in, for that matter in villages. So what has happened is that the, many of our municipality has to try to, are trying to acquire land as far because it's not available. And number two, they are, people are objecting it because no one wants a site near to our houses. So the, the futuristic challenge will be first of all to find a site. And the best thing is, of course, if you can find near to our municipality where we are generating. But certainly there are, will be scenarios where we have to go very, very far. And that will cost a lot. Very good question. Thank you. Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Yeah, we are back. Huh? Uh, actually, we are also interested in uh, knowing about valorization of solid waste. Okay. Would it be a part of your discussion later on? No, it won't be. Now you ask why. Ah, yes, obviously I yeah, would definitely ask why. Because you see there are we in environmental studies and you may be knowing it because if you're teaching it, we have courses directly which has 40 hours of teaching for solid waste management, right? But as a matter of fact, when uh, we are teaching this course, there is only three, four hours or maximum five hours given to solid waste management. So please remember this thing that it is this course is not only designed that how and what I and you understand, but also for that how do we deliver it in the, in, for the benefit of student in the most minimum time, because we won't get 40 hours, 40 lectures for solid waste management. In fact, in many institutions, we finished in two lectures. So, that's good, we should know it, students should know it, valorization, paralysis, and so on and so far, you know. But that won't be possible. And I also recommend that if you are teaching it in a course, environment studies, shouldn't, you shouldn't go into that. Why? Because we don't want to confuse students, okay? So that kind of trade-off is always there, so we have to stop somewhere. Remember, this is not what I and do in terms of research perspective thing, but rather what we should deliver to the students and how to make interesting and how they can understand in the, in the interest of time, okay? We have a course that is food industry waste management. 
and there the valorization is a significant part. So we definitely need to cater to it, right? So we have that as a part of our curriculum. Okay. So can you just uh, put, post that in the Moodle, please, so that we uh, understand what actually you want should be included, actually, so that if you want to change it, please post it on the Moodle. Yeah, SV Patil, good morning, Hello, good, good morning. noon. Very good morning to you, sir. Yeah, please ask the question. Yes, sir, what are the advanced treatment for solid waste management? Okay. Uh, this is my first question. Yeah. And second question is that just uh, recently I heard that uh, new techniques it has been planned for uh, uh, just need uh, to generate the petrol or biodiesel from the solid waste. Now, what is that exactly process? Can you explain? Very good question. So, uh, for regarding these advanced technologies, we will be uh, dealing with that maybe in the next class or so, and probably then I will try to answer your question in that. Okay, so of course there are different options available for solid waste management. We can, we call them advanced because they are not used and many of them are expensive also. But remember please that of course, solid waste management in a sense won't be that difficult if we assume that we have a lot of funds. What we are dealing here is that a reasonable amount of money so that ultimately it will be paid by you and me. So I can have wonderful technologies, but ultimately if it costs like 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees per month, probably I and you won't be ready to pay for that, okay? But we will cover about some advanced technologies in my next class. I think that with this we stop here because it's the clock is showing 12.30. Thank you very much, see you on Monday.